In part one of this brain snack, we looked at how your child's brain develops from womb to classroom. We saw how a child's brain nearly triples in size in the first year of life, then proceeds to refine itself with cholesterol and competition. I also discussed some things that parents can do to ensure the optimal development of their big, beautiful brains. In this brain snack, we'll see how the biological clock of brain development creates specific time periods where specific skills and abilities are best acquired by kids. If parents know exactly when these windows of opportunity open and close, they can do the most to ensure that their kids exit these critical periods with the best brains possible. Naturally, critical periods that facilitate your baby's movement and senses come first. Brain activity that helps your baby see, hear, smell, and taste begin even before they're born. For example, babies are born preferring foods that they were exposed to in the womb because their brains were able to process these chemical signals from the six month of pregnancy. Luckily for mom and dad, motor and sensory activity is largely reflexive. You don't have to do much to get your baby to wiggle around or look at you. But what you can do to promote this development from the time that they are born and even before is switch it up on them. That is, expose your baby and toddler to a variety of tastes, textures, sights, sounds, and even people if you want them to be neurologically well-rounded. This is how you get them to appreciate Brussels sprouts later on, or even how you can taper the bias that she might develop for her own race. Something as simple as varying the art or pictures in their rooms, switching up their books and toys every three to six months, or even switching your shampoo can profoundly and permanently affect your child's brain and expand their sensory horizons. Another critical period that starts pretty early is the one that governs your child's emotions. Now babies don't consciously feel happy or sad or any emotions until they're about six to eight months old. But they are born with the equipment to read other people's emotions. The synaptic refinement that allows them to remember and control their emotions doesn't begin until they're about two years old and won't end until they're in their late teens. This is why two-year-olds throw tantrums and not 10-year-olds. It's why five-year-olds are better at resisting marshmallows than three-year-olds. And it's why 12-year-olds may have a better grasp on their emotions but may still struggle with peer pressure or impulsive. During every phase of this very long critical period, parents can focus on fostering healthy attachments with their kids, reducing sustained stress, which can wreak havoc on brain development, and modeling ideal emotional behavior for them. Also, the emotional associations that kids make with things during this time can be pretty enduring. Learning to fear dogs at four years old can last a lifetime, for instance. So take heed, especially with the emotional associations that they make with school and learning. Another really long critical period that shuts some of its doors and windows early on is a capacity for language. Babies are born with the ability to distinguish human speech from other sounds. They begin to recognize and remember different words and grammar epithets at about six months. They start to learn the meaning of words by association at about nine months. And as soon as the speech areas of their brains get greased up at about 12 months, it's going to be a while before you get them to be quiet. Starting at about 18 months and lasting until they're three years old, brain activity in the Wernicke's area is at its peak, allowing your kids to learn and remember up to nine new words every day. This this is known as the vocabulary explosion. Now, nine might not seem like a big number, but you try it. You try learning nine new words every day and fluently using them in your vocabulary. I bet you can't. A few months later, they experience something similar in the Broca's area of their brain, which makes them more sensitive to the grammar rules of language. Not until their third year, though, do they become almost astonishingly good at using these grammar skills, adding ings and s's to words correctly, ofs and ands to statements, and accurately saying I instead of you or me. If you intend to teach your child a second language, there is no better time than this one. And there's no better way to learn any language, first, second, or third, than immersion. Your child needs to hear you talking constantly between the ages of two and six. Reading to them, talking to them, talking with them, talking about them, talking to others, talking to yourself, just talking and actually engaging them in conversation with questions and stories as much as possible. Take notes from this guy. That's what I was wondering. I don't know what they're gonna do next season because they did some stuff this time. You got it right. Exactly. Language and literacy are closely linked in the brain and develop in a similar fashion. So this is your opportunity to enhance your child's ability to read, write, and articulate themselves for the rest of their lives. Don't wait until they start school. You can start running your mouth now.
Now, we know much less about the neurological basis and sensitive periods for math than we do for language, largely because math abilities are scattered all throughout the brain. But current understanding puts the critical period for learning the basis of math and logical reasoning between the ages of one and five. These abilities are enhanced mightily by puzzles, memory games, math games, and imaginative play. This is not the time for drill and kill or rote memory learning. Worksheets and computer games for three to five year olds are fine, just not excruciating hours of them, please. The goal for this critical window in these activities should be to build the brain's capacity to process and use information efficiently, as well as fostering a deep love for learning. So more so training their brains how to think and not necessarily what to think. I'm not saying that kids can't be challenged or that they should be intellectually coddled, but studies show that heavy academic instruction before they're cognitively or emotionally ready for it, which for most kids is before the age of five, does more harm than good. So find fun ways for them to learn and practice logic. And lastly, well, not the last critical period, but the last one I can fit in a brain snack. The critical period for music. You've likely heard of the Mozart effect, that thing where listening to classical music apparently makes your baby smarter. Well, more extensive research on the matter shows that classical music does appear to temporarily boost facial temporal reasoning skills in children and adults. This is the ability to mentally move and visualize objects in space and time and to solve multi-step problems. So definitely not a bad skill to be bolstering in your little one. But making music is where the magic is at. Learning an instrument will physically and permanently change the structure of your child's brain, enhancing the growth of areas involved in analytical reasoning, math, memory, and fine motor skills. Children at any age that play an instrument for longer than six months benefit, but the best time, the most optimal and critical period to begin music training is between three and seven years old. So in sum, no construction project ever is as massive and momentous as the one currently taking place in your child's brain. It's my firm belief that the most important job that a parent has is ensuring that this construction project is a success. We can do this by making the absolute most of a child's first five years of life and finding fun and exciting ways to stimulate their brains when they need it the most. If you found anything interesting or useful in this video, if you learned something that'll help you or your kid, please like the video and comment below. Tell me what that thing is. And if you know another parent that will find this useful, maybe share your time with them. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.